Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, my camera's a little bit, a little bit tipped there. That's all good. Not that you can tell because I don't have it actually aimed flat, but how's everyone doing? Friday afternoon, as usual, finish off the week with some Comp 1511. I mean, hopefully this is finishing off the week for you. Some of you obviously are going to have to be doing homework over the weekend and stuff like that, the life of a student. But otherwise, it's a nice sunny day outside. Probably that only counts if you're in Sydney, where I am at the moment. But, you know, hope you're having a good day wherever you are. So we hit an interesting point now. Um, that I've been building up this linked list thing. And so we have done two lectures on linked lists. And we've gotten to the point where we could um, build lists in more than one way. And anyone who has started working on the assignments probably noticed that um, building lists in interesting ways is, um, is is part of what really makes linked lists uh, interesting in that arrays uh, are limited in exactly how they can build their information. Uh, structs can also do it in a certain way, but linked lists are potentially much more interesting. Very, very flexible data format. Um, but we're going to continue that today by even more increasing the flexibility of these by being able to remove things. Um, and this is very different from how we might try to remove something from an array where we just like sort of replace a value or something like that. Um, in a linked list, we can make out as if the, the thing that we removed just never existed, which is really interesting because it means that if you remove something, you can also remove the gap in between the things on either side of it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And now that we get to this point, I mean, our program has been a little bit dangerous the whole time we've been working on it, the last week and a half, uh, in that it has been basically leaking memory <laughs> the whole time. It's not, it's not that bad because every time the program ends, its memory gets cleaned up. But if we were going to use this thing for a long term thing, or we want it to last longer than just, you know, run for a few seconds and then finish, um, we do need to make sure that we're taking care of our memory. It's a good thing to practice. So today we're going to be doubling up on what we're doing. One thing we're going to be doing is removing things, um, but you know, if we're removing things from our linked list, those things are usually pieces of allocated memory. We're going to be wanting to clean up that memory as well. So we're going to be looking at freeing the memory from our linked lists today. Hi, Rani. How's it going? Rani's our moderator today. Oh, you asked the question about the assignment, so people are uh, asking a lot uh, about it. Um, right, okay, lots of interesting things there. Let's move on to the lecture itself. So, thinking about what we did last time, um, I guess I don't need to say much about what we did last time, because I was just talking about it a second ago. Um, it's easy to think about, because this is a continuation of, of lectures. It's like, you know, like uh, any, any TV series where you've got, like, the episodes that are separate from each other. Some people call them filler episodes. Some filler episodes are the best episodes in some series. Um, but then you've got the ones that really push the narrative of the story. Not self-contained episodes, but this big kind of to-be-continued, what's-gonna-happen-next uh, kind of episodes. And we're at the end of one of these arcs now, where this is going to be the final lecture on linked lists. So we're going to do a, bigger, a bit of a recap on where we're up to with linked lists, what capabilities we have so far, um, and then we're going to think about what we're going to do next. So last lecture was insertion, and also a particular way of looping through linked lists. It was an interesting thing, because the loops that we made last time we were here, uh, a lot of the time when we're looping through something like data, looping through an array or a linked list, where we're interested in just going all the way through. So you start at the beginning, go all the way through to the end, and you say, I've seen every element of the list, um, so now I know everything that's in it, or I, I know some information, I can track some information. But one of the interesting things that we were doing with our loops was we were finding a place to stop. And we we're saying, we need to stop somewhere in this list, and when we stop, we have two pointers, like one pointing at where we stopped and one pointing just before where we stopped. So we had this particular setup we were using and it allowed us to, to choose a place to insert an element into the list. Um, we're also going to be doing that this time where we're looping through until we find a condition stopping the loop prematurely in a sense and then saying this is where we're going to remove from the list. But I'll talk about that in a second when we get deeper into it. So. As I said already a couple of times now, we're going to be looking at linked list removal, freeing allocated memory, and then we're going to have this whole thing tied together 
into a complete program which has the capability to build a list of players um, importantly building that list of players in some kind of order we've chosen a pseudo alphabetical order we only use string compare it's not a full alphabetical um, because it's uh, it completely it does different things completely depending on whether things are capitalized or not because it's only doing things on ASCII values not on their actual place in the alphabet but you know close um, and um, what was I going to say next? Where oh, then we're going to once we've built our list, we're going to be able to basically knock people out of the game one at a time. So we're going to have our our user type in the name of the player, remove them from the game until there's only one player left, and then we say, okay, that is the winner of the particular battle royale. So it's a it's a genre of games where basically you start with a lot of people. Uh, the magic number for a lot of these games is a hundred people play a game together. And they all get knocked out one at a time. It's not usually one at a time. Sometimes it's like 20 people at a time. But they all get knocked out until one person remains and that person gets gets crowned the winner. There's a whole whole series of games in this genre nowadays. So I thought it might be a fun one for linked lists because it's got a lot of insertion and removal into the lists. Okay, so a bit of a recap on what we did last time. We used our string compare function. I mean, I've got the full slides in here. I'm not going to talk through them all because you can always go back to the last lecture if you want to see my detailed analysis of everything we're talking about here. But we're looping through um, using string compare to decide whether we were before or after a node. Um, and we've got a, um, a diagram here that kind of shows it. So if I had this A, B, D, and E, and I wanted to insert C, the correct position for it is between B and D alphabetically. Um, so we'd loop through and we'd skip over nodes if we knew that C was after them. But then we would stop skipping over nodes here because C is not after D, C is before D alphabetically. So the loop would stop here, this pointer would remain, and then we're also saving a pointer to this one. Because we know that if we've got pointers to, to two nodes, we should be quite fine to insert in between those two nodes. Um, so us using this particular code here, which was um, the ability to... Oh, we wrote it slightly differently because we had a current and a previous instead of P and previous. So I think current and previous makes it easier to understand. So I'm going to go with the code that we've written rather than the code that I've got here in the slides. But the trick is that we're trailing this previous pointer with us and we're following this along so that when our pointer gets to here we still have access to this one here which means if we want to insert in between these two we have both of them available so whatever kind of insertion algorithm that I want to use I can have both usually it's just the previous is the only one we need because it will tell us it's next anyway but you know so this is handy because um, we've got this code or my example code, so I don't always write the code exactly as it is on the slides. I'm not just going to copy paste it in. Um, when I build it up, it's not always going to be exactly the same. And I think it's good to know that because, you know, when we're writing code, uh, we're not really going to be writing exactly the same code as other people. Um, we're probably still going to get the same job done, um, but a lot of people are going to write in our own way, obviously try as hard as you can to, to stick within the style guide as well because we want everyone to be able to read everyone else's code and so we have this kind of consistent agreement between us about how the code should work. Um, oh, someone's saying that, uh, I think Jennifer there is saying that there is a string case compare which will um, compare uh, strings with I assume without being case sensitive, so a capital A and a small a will be the same. So that's interesting. Oh, hi, Jack. Um, Rani and Jack, I'm not sure if something... I don't I don't know if both of you have been scheduled on today by accident or something. Oh, well, we'll see how we go. We've got two mods. That's not going to hurt. There'll be lots of answers to all of your questions. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to what we're, what we're adding to our code. Actually, let's uh, let's open our code. So, I have. Wait, let me just. We are on lecture fourteen, if I remember correctly. So, here is the web link that I will paste into the YouTube chat. There, if you're not on YouTube, um, you can see 
the link here, well, maybe if you can read it that small, I don't know. Um, or the link is obviously in the lecture section on the, the course website as well. So we've got these three files and what I've done is I have copied, where was I? I was here. I've copied where we were up to at the end of lecture 13. So I'm always, I'm, I'm keeping us. So if you want to go back through the previous lectures, you can see our code at the end of the previous lectures. So I'll go to today's, which is a copy of where we ended up uh, last week. What are we, lecture 14? There we go. Got my three files here. So I've got my little multi file project. I'm going to open them all. And so if you recall what this thing was doing, if we could go to the main, it was creating a head and then inserting multiple people alphabetically into this. So we can we can add more people to this list as we need to. Um, and we were doing a little bit of testing to show that print players was showing that these, every single one of them as it was being inserted was being inserted alphabet alphabetically into the list. I don't think we need to prove that anymore so I will just remove these print players here but I might add a couple more players just people from different worlds combining uh, colliding sorry let's let's throw Vegeta in here as well so anyone who's who's a fan of like you can you can just tell I watch cartoons, <laughs> but but old cartoons, <laughs> it's like Dragon Ball Z or um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. I think these are like the 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 biggest cartoons that I've actually watched all the way through to the finish recently. Should throw like Naruto and Sasuke in there. I'm gonna get like more more old. I'm really dating myself here with my 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 quotes. But anyway. Each one of these is going to be inserted into the list in an alphabetical fashion, which if we look at the function itself, insert alpha was going through and was finding the point. Actually, it's even, even easier if I just go back to the diagram. It was finding the point that that person should be inserted into the list and then inserting them in between whatever was there or before whatever was there at the beginning or after whatever's there at the end. And we had code that was able to deal with all of those situations. So, we had insert after, which was the function that we are using here, which meant that if we're inserting in between two elements or we're inserting after the end of the list, um, we're, we're able to insert that way. The only other issue we had was if we were inserting at the head of the list, we had to say, um, if we're the new head, then our next must be whatever the old head was. And then we become the new head like that. Oh, Rani's heading off. Thank you, Rani. She's probably already gone. <laughs> but but Jack's with us today. That's cool. Um, <laughs> Gorb wants me to add Zuko in. <laughs> I mean, we could just add more players, but it means every time I run the example to show you what's happening, it takes longer to do it. So I'm just gonna gonna go easy on the number of people that are in it. Anyway, so we're able to insert anywhere into this list, either at the beginning, middle, or the end. Um, this is an interesting thing that you're gonna notice, and you'll definitely notice when you're working on your assignment, is that in order to test things effectively when we're working with stuff like linked lists, um, there's always three tests minimum that you wanna do to make sure everything works. Um, am I doing something at the very beginning of the list, the first element of the list, or an empty list? Am I doing something in the middle of the list? This is the one that's probably the easiest to think about. It's the, the general case that we'll be doing most of the time. And then am I doing something at the end of the list? So is it the, um, the, the last element of the list or is it something to do with being off the end of the list? And if you can test those three things um, all the time, um, then you will... Uh, um, then uh, then you'll be able to um, know that most of the time things are working. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tao Tao. I call Dragon Ball Z a cartoon instead of an anime. <laughs> I will I will be never forgiven for this. Okay, all right. Um, 
So that's where we're up to at the moment. We can compile and run this. So remember, when we're compiling a multi-file project, uh, we're going to compile all the C files in the project. But we don't compile the H files. What we're doing is trusting that any H files that these C files need, they will grab for themselves. So it so happens the H file links up this entire project. So both C files are going to see the H file. And what we're hoping to see here is this ends up in an alphabetically ordered list. Um, when it prints out here. So, call it battle, and we will run battle, and see what this list ends up as. So we've got um, the the 1511 heroes, obviously myself and Chicken are in there, and then there's the Dragon Ball Z people and the um, Avatar Last Airbender people. And when we do this, we can see now that this has all gone into alphabetical order, which is nice. So we've had a way of inserting each of these one at a time. So even though we inserted these out of order, our insert alpha function is able to figure out where exactly it should be and then put it in the right place. <laughs> Joseph said, this matchup is unbalanced. The chicken is too strong. That is true. Uh, chicken will probably win this entire thing, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we're doing, so these, these are our players, so let's say we're playing the game, it's not a huge battle royale, it's only got six people in it, but these people are going to get removed one at a time from this list. So in order to remove people from this list, we need to be able to find people, and then we need to be able to remove them. So two little things we need to do. Finding people shouldn't be too hard, because we already have some structure, um, some looping code that we know is going to be able to loop through and stop at a certain point. So if we know that, then we can modify that code in some way to stop exactly when we find a name that matches a name that was typed in. Uh, but the removal is something we want to look at. So let's look at exactly how we're going to remove things from a list before we actually start writing that code. So it's going to be really, really um, similar to the way that we were doing insert alpha, where we have a generic function that says in, this can just insert. And then we have a function that uses the insert function alphabetically. So we could do other things. Like someone's just saying there, Ricardo's saying we should have sorted them by power levels. Um, so that would be really interesting because if we wanted to sort them by power levels, um, then we could add something to our struct and have an integer in that struct. And instead of insert alpha, we could have insert power, for example, which would um, compare people based on their power levels rather than comparing them based on their alphabetical. Um, in fact, that would be an interesting challenge if you want to do that, Ricardo. I don't think it would be that hard. I mean, you may want to just work on the assignment. It's exactly the same kind of thing as you're doing in the assignment. But, but it could be interesting because you could get, you'd could you say, okay, these things are all numbered. Right. So um, everyone would have a different power level and it would be interesting to say, okay, we could sort these by numbers or we could sort them by name or we could have like um, different print uh, methods like... Uh, a one print that would print things out in alphabetical order, a different print which would print them out via power level, and maybe another one that prints them out by, by whatever score they're on and stuff. So there's there's actually lots of different ways that we could do this. But anyway, let's look at removing a specific node. So what I'm thinking of is this idea that our program here is managing the scoreboard in a sense. And there's another program, the game itself, which is managing who's being knocked out or not. So some information is going to come in from the other game. Uh, we're going to do it just by typing in the names, but that means we need to look through the list, see if a um, the player name that we have typed in matches one of the names in the, um, in the current player list. Um, and then we're going to move pointers around so that we can remove someone from the list. Um, now let's have a look at how that works. So We've got um, a little bit nearly less detail than when I was talking about inserting the nodes because I think I'm I'm going to jump straight into the the images here. So I put myself up against Ang and Goku, so I'm I'm real confident here. <laughs> I think I can take these two on, right? Um, I'm I'm probably like at best one of the characters that like get stuff broken and then screams and runs away in, in either of their universes. So we've got a first player, second player, third player in here, and we're going to remove one of them from the list. So let's, for to make it easy on us, we're going to remove the second player here. So, you know, I said there's, there's special cases for the start and the end of the list, and then the one that we're going to use most is in the middle. We're going to use that one first. So 
Sorry, Aang, you're going first. Um, obviously not anything to do with me. Must have gone and tried to take on Goku, and obvious results. So, what we need to do is we need to maintain the list and keep it as it is. Um, oh, sorry, not keep it as it is. Keep it as a proper functioning linked list. So a proper functioning linked list like this means that the it has to have a head pointer pointing at one of the nodes. Each node is connected to other nodes, and then the last one's pointing at null. If I think that this one is going to be removed, I can bypass it by saying this next pointer. Um, I no longer need it to be aimed here. I would like it to skip this player. So if it's going to skip this second player, then it's going to take a copy of this next pointer, which aims at the third player here, and it's going to say, okay, I'm going to skip over you. So this is like just one line of code to say, my next point pointer is now not aimed here, but it is aimed here instead. So it does this. It bypasses the second player, and now we have a completely well-formed linked list that just has the first player and the third player in it, and the first player's next pointer has now skipped the second player. One thing to be really careful of when we do this is up until this point, the only way we knew where the second player was was following the pointer from the first player. So once we do this, we need to make sure that we somewhere else we have a pointer aimed at the second player that says, okay, I still know where this thing is because we're not done with this node. This node is just sitting there still. It's still occupying a piece of our memory um, and it still exists. So it's not like a variable where when it hits the end of the, cl the curly brackets it just disappears on its own. These are all memory allocated pieces. So we need to make sure that this one gets freed properly. So when we skip this node by, by changing this pointer, we need to make sure that somewhere else we have access to this one. So if we do, we saved access to that one through another pointer. We know what its address is uh, in some way because we've stored it. We then free that. So we call free on the pointer that we had aimed at this node. This gives the memory back to the computer. Um, so we don't. We no longer need to record um, that that player is is part of the linked list of players. It's just it's just out. So. Um, once the player gets knocked out, we'll free the memory that was used to um, to keep track of their name, to keep them as a member of the list. And now at this point, my my program is kind of clean, list is clean and ready to go because this list is still well formed. Head, nodes, null, you know, and they're all connected. Um, and there are no nodes floating around that aren't part of the list. Um, this one's been freed now. So um, memory goes back to the computer to use for other things. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said Mark Chi is Cabbage Man confirmed. That is exactly who I was thinking of <laughs> when I said that. <laughs> and, and Jennifer's saying, how come Chicken's no longer in the game? Someone else clearly hacked it. Yeah. Um, yes. So I'm secretly uh, one of the heirs to Cabbage Corp. It's getting pretty deep into it. We were, were like all the way into Legend of Korra then by that point. Anyway, we digress. So this in code is actually not that complex. I mean, it's really, again, with linked lists, it's more important to understand how to do this with pictures and then try to translate it into code because the code is actually very, very simple. So let's write this code rather than just looking at it. I mean, we can look at it, but I think it's more interesting for me to write it. We are going to add a function that removes a player. So first thing I want to do is if, um, the player needs to be removed from the main file, um, which they probably do because in here is where we're going to do our removal. Um, then the H file has to define that um, the remove player function exists. Like so. And we have to think, okay, what information are we going to need to remove a player from a list? Um, I've instinctively said we're going to return something because my instinct for this is I'm going to need to give a list and I'm probably going to also want to give a pointer to the element I want to remove from that list. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that element in the list, pull it out of the list, um, and then return the list itself. The reason why I'm taking input as the list and I'm giving back the list is there's a chance I'm removing the head of the list. And if I remove the head of the list, then 
things like this head will no longer be valid because they'll be no, they'll no longer be pointing it um, as allocated memory because we'll free it in this function. So if the list changes, the list head changes, we need to to give it back. So let's just have a look. Was I doing that same thing there? I think I was. Yes, I was returning the head there. Okay. So to remove a player, what I'm going to say is I will take the head of the list and then I will take a pointer to a player that I want to remove. So this assumes that somewhere I have some way of finding the player and, and giving that reference to, um, to this function. So here I've done the same thing where I've actually done it with a like different notation here. So I think, oh right, okay, I didn't actually separate into this to two functions here. So it's good that I actually stopped to look at this. I think what we're going to do is remove player just based on their name. So we're not doing on a pointer, we're going to say, you give me the name of a player, I'll find them and remove them from the list. So it isn't actually necessarily like a generic like a uh, generic function like the insert after it's actually removing the player via their name so let's do this rather than a pointer to the player itself we're going to do I'm gonna use this notation again you've seen me do this before right where I don't need to specify how long this is I could just do a pointer to the first character and say you figure out the rest of the string. But I'm doing this to remind myself exactly what this thing is. It's going to be the standard sized string for names. Um, so this is going to find the player that matches rem name in the list starting at head remove and free that player return the head it may have changed because if we if we remove the head of the list then that one will have changed okay this will be enough for the main.c to call that function um, it doesn't do anything yet because the function is empty um, but at least the main.c can see this and say all right this is how I'm going to remove a player um, then what we need to do is make sure this thing actually works. So we're going to go into our battle royale.c and we're going to create said function. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more detail in here for myself um, because this will be my recipe for how I'm going to build this function. So loop through list looking for a match between uh, a player's name and rem name. Remove and free that node if it exists. Because it might not always exist. There might be some errors somewhere. There might be some other things that happen. We might loop through the whole list looking for, an, for a name. Um, but it was um, someone we'd already removed, or it was a typo, and so we shouldn't necessarily remove someone just because it was a typo. So we say, all right, there's a chance that they were going to call this function and nothing will change. Um, return the head of the list. Um, special case if we removed the old head. So if there was a head of the list before and we removed it, um, then... Um, uh, then we will um, return a new head of the list. Uh, Mal was asking there, can we free the node immediately after we skip it? Oh, you said never mind. Yeah, yeah, we will actually be doing that. Um, oh, <laughs> I was about to answer Deluxe's question there, but Jack's got it, so I'll let you answer that one, Jack. Because um, that one actually would take me a little while, a little bit more detail. Okay, so I have a, a, a kind of a recipe for what I'm doing here. I'm going to loop through the list looking for a match between a player's name and the remove name. So let's set up some looping. So a player current equals head because I've been given the head of the list and I'm going to start at the head of the list. Now I know that when I loop through here, I'm going to end up with a pointer 
Hang on. Sometimes I have to look at my Microsoft Paint skills and just giggle rather than trying to make it look better. <laughs> okay, so let's say this is A, B, C, D, and I'm removing C from the list. If I'm going to remove C from the list, it means I'm going to move a pointer through this list until the pointer finds C here. So. So this is where my pointer would end up if I was going through the list and finding C. In order to remove C from the list, I need B's next pointer to skip C. So if I need B's next pointer to skip C, then I'm going to need to, very much like we did with the insertion, I'm going to need a previous pointer trailing along behind me to say, okay, um, this is the one that I'm going to use to skip this one, and then I'm going to free the memory of this one. So the loop is starting to look more and more like the same kind of thing we did with the insert alphabetically. So the insert alphabetically was like, we've got a current which starts off at the start, the first node of the list. Previous starts null because it starts kind of not on the list because there's no previous to the first. And then they both just move along the list like that. So this whole kind of looping structure is going to be the same thing. The thing that's important though is something here is going to change because we're going to stop if the typed in string matches something um, rather than here where we we're saying stop once you've gone you've, you've crossed over from being after things in the alphabet to being before something in the alphabet so let's build our structure and then we'll have a look at that if statement in a second well the not if statement the while loop condition okay so we had a head Uh, our current point is pointing at the head and then we have a previous pointer pointing at nothing so far then we've got our while loop the iterator that moves through our while loop since we're using two pointers here we're going to move both of them so the previous pointer is going to copy the current pointer so basically it's, it's this chase the previous pointer copies the current pointer the current pointer moves on to the next then previous follows current current moves on to the next so they kind of look like they're doing that but they're kind of doing this like that <laughs> there you go just doing it all with with images one day I will do a whole series of funky animations for this but uh, this is not that day <laughs> okay so current moves on in the same way that we were doing basic looping through linked lists where we say um, move on to the next node in the list so you read the current node that you're in read its next pointer and then change your pointer to be that next pointer. Obviously this accessing of the next can only work if current is not null. If current was pointing at, pointing at null and we had to say we tried to say null next, null doesn't have a next because it's not a struct and doesn't have fields. So we need to make sure that we only run this code if the current is not null. This gives us two things. Uh, one is if we end up off the end of the list, this while loop stops, or if the list was empty in the first place, this while loop will never run. So we'll never move these pointers. They just stay in this configuration that they're in. The other thing though, is we wanted a stopping case. So we wanted a case that says, if the um, the string that we were given, as in the name of the person we we're trying to remove, that we're calling rem name, matches the current's name, um, then we need to stop. So we need to say that, let's do a string compare. And the two things that we're um, checking against each other are the remove name and the current name. So the only reason I can do this here, and this is like one of the subtleties of how, how we do checks in stuff like while loops, is that this one will get checked first. So if current is null, then we will never get to this part of the, the end, because the end requires both sides to be true. So if current is null, we will never evaluate this side, which means we will never have a problem of trying to check the name of a null 
here because we know that this side has to go first and we know that if current is not null then we can check current's name in this next part so it's actually going left to right in the in the in the check of a while loop it's the same for if statements as well it will go left to right uh, and if it fails it will say um, I'm not going to check these other bits I think it will also not check other bits if it passes as well so if you've got an or statement it won't check other things if the first one is true um, so this way we can kind of make sure that we can look for the name because we've already checked that it's not null and it will have a name okay so string compare is going to say uh, positive if the first one is higher than the second one so if rem name is after the second one oops dragging things around um, it's gonna say negative if um, rem name is before current name and it's gonna say zero if they match so what I want to say is if they don't match we're gonna keep looping because we're gonna keep looping until we find the one that matches so what I'm gonna what I'm wanting here for this string compare is if this is not equal to zero keep looping and if it is equal to zero it means these two are the same in which case we want to stop if we want to stop that means that my pointer at that point my current pointer will now be aimed at a player whose name matches rem name so I can say that here current is now pointing at a player whose name matches rem name. Or, think about this though, what if none of, none of the names in the list matched the remove name? Um, someone was asking, who is rem? Um, that's short for remove name, so what we're what we're saying there is at some point we're going to get given a string which is the identifier for the person who we need to remove from the list so we're going to do that in here by doing something like hello operator please type in the name of the person who was knocked out of the of the um uh, the battle royale and let's say vegeta gets knocked out of the battle royale it'll be a string vegeta that matches the the player node somewhere in the list and then we're going to remove them so we haven't yet written the code that uses this function but we will get there in a moment <laughs> caffeine said sire is actually referring to a joke in an anime there's someone called rem in an anime somewhere uh must be one i haven't watched i apologize um okay so <laughs> current's now pointing at a player whose matches rem name or is null if it has reached the end of the list so that's important to think about so we can think about what we do if we find someone we also need to think about what we do if we don't find someone so we're going to split our code in the way that we have done before to say we're going to take one or two part one of two paths either um, we've reached the end of the list or it matches something in fact we probably don't even need this else for the moment so I'm gonna say if current is not null um, then um, I'm gonna put this in here current is now pointing at a player whose name matches rem name and then um, I'll put this afterwards So we know we're going to behave differently based on whether or not um, whether or not we found a real a real player. Okay, so current pointed at a player. If it's pointed at a player, we now do our remove. So the remove thing was to take the um, take the previous. So we take the go back to my picture. The previous next node which is this one here, and we skip this node. So previous next here, and we say, you are going to skip that node by copying its next pointer. We still have a pointer tracking C, which is our current pointer. 
might actually rename this now that we have a genuine variable name for it. So this one's current, this one's previous, and we're using currents next, and we're saying previous B's next will take a copy of currents next, so it will be pointed at the same object. So previous next will now become currents next. Vincent was asking about um, string compare. It's interesting. What it does is it looks at the first letters of both, and then it says, "Okay, are those? Uh, is there a difference between them? If there isn't a difference, it goes to the second letter and says, "Is there a difference between them?" And it goes through the words like that. Similarly to how we actually, as humans, do alphabetical order, we go, "Oh, those those two um, words both start with the letter A, so let's look at the second letter." Or we say, that one starts with the letter C, that one starts with the letter F, so the C one goes before the F one, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so we skip the, um, uh, we skip the one that we're going to remove, and then we're going to free the one that we've removed. So this is all fine, right? No problem here, nothing wrong with this code. Can anyone see the dastardly villain behind me that is that is causing the problem here? We have a potential issue here in that this pointer, we're accessing a, a field inside this struct. Um, <laughs> what happens if this previous starts as null previous becomes current, but what happens if this never runs? Because the thing we're removing is the head of the list. If if that happens, then we cannot say previous next. We can't, um, we can't just say um, grab the next of something if previous never made it onto the list. So if the thing we're trying to remove is the first element of the list, then we can't just go previous next. We can't just grab a pointer to skip it. So in another example here, let's say my current pointer was here and my previous pointer was waiting for its time to do something by pointing at null Ooh. look you know, you know what I'm trying to write even if I can't Right. Just ignore ignore my, my, my poor mouse writing skills. I don't think anyone's very good at writing with a mouse anyway. So if previous is pointed at null, current's pointed at the first one, and we get a match right then and there, and this is the one we're trying to remove, then we can't use the next pointer of this null to skip this. That just doesn't exist. So we need to we need to work differently if we're trying to remove the first element of the list. So gonna need another if statement in here to check for that. So if previous is null, when we're removing the head of the list, then what we need to do is we need to say the head of the list is no longer gonna be the same, so we're going to change it. So the head is now going to equal um, let's have a look at what it would equal. So previous next was going to take a copy of current next. So if the pointer pointed at this first node, let's just do that. Is my head pointer. Then what I need to do now is instead of taking previous next pointer, this one, and, and changing it to current next, we need the head to now change to current next. So we're still skipping this node, but instead of skipping it from another node, we're skipping it from the head pointer. So this thing said previous next is the current next. This is head is equal to current next. So the head pointer is now going to skip the first element of the list. So
I'm going to put some comments in here. Removing an element somewhere other than the head. So I'll take this piece of code and put it in here. So here is the code for skipping the thing, moving a pointer to skip the current element. So either we skip the current element by moving the head pointer, or we skip the current element by moving the pointer from the element just before the one we're removing. So two cases here. Either we're moving this pointer here, or we're taking our head pointer and saying, you can't point at this thing because it's about to be removed. Instead, you shall point at this one, which is the new first element of the list because this element's about to get destroyed. Okay, so if I've done that, then I have my two different ways of skipping the element that's there. Um, just to check, you know I said we're gonna check three things, uh, start, middle, and end. We have start here, we have middle. If we're removing the final thing in the list, then this next pointer, let me just draw it. If this one is pointed at null, then this pointer could copy this thing's next pointer and then it would be pointed at null. So I think that the code that we've written already for removing somewhere in the list, this one, is fine. It's going to do the work um, if we're in the middle or the end of the list. This is going to do the work if we're at the start of the list. Regardless of how we skipped the current, we're always going to free it. So this one can go outside of those if statements. So we're checking that there is a node to remove. Um, and if there is a node to remove, we're actually here just saying like, we don't even need an else. Because if, there, if we didn't find a node to remove, then we're just not going to do anything. We're just going to leave the list as it is. So. If the thing we were removing was the head of the list, we changed the head of the list to skip what had been the um, the first element of the list, which is where our current pointer is. So this is head and current are actually going to be the same at this point. If I wanted to, I could just said instead of previous equal null, I could say if head equals current, because there's there's multiple different ways for us to see that we've matched with the first element of the list. I'll leave that in there in case might make it easier to read. So if previous is null, head is a current, that means we're removing the head of the list. So we skip over current by moving the head, or we skip over current by moving the pointer that was aimed at it. So both of these are pointers that are aimed at the current node, um, and we're just moving them along so that the structure of our list remains valid. So this one skips it like so, this one skips it like so. And then after that, we free the current, which will do the following. What colors haven't I used? That will go, and that will go. Both of these remain valid linked lists. So assuming there's a head pointer aimed at this, we've got a pointer to this one, pointer to this one, pointer to null. This one has a head pointer pointed at something, and we're going to assume the rest of this list was valid because it was before we started trying to remove things. Uh, we're, we're assuming that people are giving us valid lists, and we're not necessarily checking every single list that goes into a function to make sure that it is all linked up properly with pointers and stuff like that. Okay, so this is going to remove a player by searching through here and finding the the player that matches the name and stopping. So let me just put a comment in here. Loop through and stop with current name equals the remove name. So this is not legal code. That's why it's in a comment because you can't do a double equals on strings but we understand what we mean here. So we're using the string compare to say that. So this loops through and it will stop there and we'll maintain previous and current at that position. And then we remove by skipping over um, the current and then freeing it. The last thing we have to do, we know we have to return the head of the list, special case if we remove the old head. So 
there's this bit of code if we removed the head of the list that changes it. Otherwise, the head of the list is unchanged and we'll give it back. So there's our code. That should be enough for us to be able to remove an element of the list knowing only its name. A um, few questions there. Looks like Jack's on those questions. Um, oh, we actually looked at this. Uh, wasn't yesterday. Wednesday. Sorry, because we did a live stream yesterday as well. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm lecturing every day. What's happening? Um, on Wednesday, someone actually looked at this, and for them, it was returning negative one or positive one all the time. So it wasn't really measuring an ASCII distance between things. It was just saying negative one or positive one or zero. Uh, Artsmart is saying, as the program does not properly alphabetically order the names and just uses ASCII, would Bob come before Anna? Um, quite possibly. Yes. Let's um, have a quick look. I always have to look this up because I don't memorize it. Um, the ASCII table itself, uh, which of these has a nice big font that we can see? Uh, this one might be alright. That's not the ASCII table I was looking for. <laughs> Someone was doing an ASCII table in a different language. Okay. Okay, here's an ASCII table and we have the capital letters are lower numbers than the lowercase letters. So what this is saying is that if it has a capital letter, all capital letters come before all lowercase letters. So that's the way it'll work if um, uh, if you're um, if you're doing it just with string compare. So that's why I said we're doing like a, a pseudo alphabetical. We're not worried too much about um, whether it is a uh, um, genuine alphabetical or um, what's going to call it, uh, case insensitive alphabetical. Instead, we're just going to say, look, we're just going to let the ASCII table do it. So this definition of alphabetical is saying that any capital letter comes before all uh, lowercase letters. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure if I need to be on that slide right now. Okay, so the image is showing us what we're doing and we're back here with our code. So now we have a function. I'm just going to clean this up. Oops. I'm scared now. I think VLab Gedit is lagging. I'm gonna give that a second. Because I think I just pressed a key by accident. <laughs> uh, Gorb says something interesting that you can actually do some some mathematical stuff. Um, looking at characters as if they're numbers. And you can actually do um, you know how there's a function for two lower and two upper? You can actually do things where you can say uh, to convert something between lowercase and uppercase is just to add a number to it or, or minus a number from it and we'll change it between upper and lowercase. You can play around with little things like that. Um, oh, Jennifer had already answered my question as I was doing it. Thank you. Yeah, oops. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so loop through, stop there. And then here we have our tests. All right. So we need to see whether this is working or not. So in order to see whether this is working or not, let's um, put some code in here that's actually going to remove stuff. So I might just do a printf who's just been knocked out. Put a new line on that. And then we'll do a scanf. Oh wait. We can't do a scan f with a with a string. We'll do an f gets on this. <laughs> I was about to do an f gets like it was a scan f. So an f gets is going to, if I remember correctly, it's going to need to put it into a string. So we need to make a string first. Um, I don't have, oh wait, do I have hash defines from the H file? Let me see. I have a max name length perfect from the H file. And we're going to F gets into the input and I'm going to forget as I do often exactly what 
um, the format of f gets is what the order of the uh, uh, the inputs are. So I'm going to look that up. I used f gets in C here. Granted, if I had remembered what it was, I still would have looked it up because I want to show you that you should be looking these things up if you forget them. So, string comes first, maximum length of the string, the stream that it's coming from. So for the moment, the only stream we use is uh, standard input, um, but there are things like file streams as well. So input, how many are the maximum number of letters and std in, which is the keyword for the stream input there. So we've got our input and we've read our input based on uh, asking the question of who gets knocked out. The only issue we've got here, and you may remember this issue from fgets, is that if I type this in and press enter, enter is going to be the last character in my input string here. So we need to remove that if it's there. So I'm going to do some of my little trickery. Do I have, I might need the string function here. If the last letter is a new line, we're going to chop that letter off the string. So if input, the last letter is going to be its length, which I'm going to use the convenient sterling, string length of input minus one. So string length of input is going to tell me exactly how many characters there are. The final index is going to be one less than that. So this complicated piece of thing here says the final index of um, a, a valid letter in, in the input string. So this is the final letter that comes before the null terminator. Are you a new line? If you are a new line, we're going to replace you with a null terminator. So we're going to be this, this now equals the null terminator. So this is me just checking. If I press enter at the end of that, then um, replace it. Uh, I do need this check. I mean, it might be like, you might think to just do this, but it's not always going to have a new line on the end. So if I got this not from being typed in, or if I typed in more numbers than the maximum, uh, more letters than the maximum name length, then I won't get a new line on the end. I'll just get whatever letters I typed up until that number. So it's good to have this little thing to just check and to strip the new line off the end if it's there and replace it with the null terminate. We'll just end at one letter earlier. Um, There's a question there about, is there something built into the terminal text editor to let you auto look up the inputs? Uh, I don't think there is necessarily, but I'm not sure. Not sure I fully understand what it is you're looking up there. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if I, if, I, if I do more stuff and it clarifies that question. Okay, so after that, we're going to print the players again. So this is just going to test whether we can look at a list of players, uh, type in someone to get knocked out and then print out who's left in the list um, oh we actually have to remove them <laughs> I was like doing all this stuff on the input and we haven't actually called the remove function <laughs> okay so the head uh, the the list that might change is going to then be remove player and we can go to our h file convenient h file to say what was it the list and then the name. Okay, so the list is head because we've just used head to, to me the list. I mean, really, I probably should have named this better at this point to something like player list or something like that. But while it's there as head, it's gonna stay there for the moment. So we remove player from the head of the list and the player's name is this input string that we've just typed in. Okay, this little piece of code should be enough for me to test whether the remove player function is working. So we're going to print out the list, take in our input, and then print out the list again. Hopefully, if I have typed it incorrectly, this is going to remove someone from the list and show that they've been removed. So we're going to test this code now because we haven't compiled or tested it, and we've written our tester code here. 
to do that. So there's my compilation command. Uh, no issues from the compilation, which means that our C syntax is correct, but we don't necessarily know. That's not telling us for certain that um, this program is going to run, so let's find out. Okay, we have our list of people there, and we say, who's just been knocked out? Um, so I'm going to take the obvious first choice as the person who always gets knocked out first in a lot of these situations is Vegeta. Vegeta's going to get all... All, all arrogant and go in first and try to try to fight and um, be overly aggressive and get knocked out. So this was what I typed in, Vegeta, and then after that the list now has five people left in it with Vegeta removed. And it's like, great, that's really good. So that means that um, one of our removals was working. So that was removing the person at the end of the list. So again, let's test three things. Um, <clears throat> sorry, end of the list middle of the list, start of the list. So let's test this again and say, let's test the start of the list and see if this is still gonna work. Oh, that was the one I typed in. And then the list has five elements remaining. Um, so removing from the start of the list worked. Uh, let's test our code again for someone being removed from the middle of the list. Uh, Katara's in the middle, roughly. So we'll see what happens there. The list gets printed out again. Five people, uh, Katara removed. That's good. So we have done our our basic set of three tests that says um, uh, we can use this remove player function, take in a string from this remove player function, and remove one of the nodes from the linked list, like so. I'll just change my cursor, like so. We can remove from the middle. We tested removing from the beginning. And we also tested is if we were removing from from the end there. So we think that our remove player function is is functioning reasonably well. <laughs> that's that's the biggest guarantee I'm ever going to give you if I've tested this thoroughly. Uh, I haven't tested thoroughly enough to say that this is hundred percent working, but I'm pretty sure it's working. Okay. So we have found the right player, looped through and removed them. Um, and this is a good time to go on break. Uh, so it's like 5.02 now, so it's perfect timing, I think. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about um, some things that you can do to keep track of your own code projects. Um, professionally, this is something that will 100% be expected of you. These tools are so kind of so well connected with programming that we're, we're really going to be using them all the time. We expect that people know how to use them. Um, and um, and we'll be able to kind of keep their code organized and backed up using systems like this. Um, so Git is the um, is the name of the kind of protocol, I guess you would call it, that we use to um, uh, to not just save backups of our code, but also track all the changes in our code. So Git is like this this long series of of snapshots in time of your code and you can step back through them um, you can track what happened in between um, time points and stuff like that um, and so it's it's very very useful um, we're not necessarily making you use it at this point um, because right now you know what I'm teaching you in 1511 is more about understanding the nature of programming which is a much more fundamental skill, in a sense. But it's worth checking out some stuff like that. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's pretty useful. So there's a couple of ways that you can use this. Um, GitHub is one of them, and Bitbucket is another. These are two providers. Like One of them's actually Bitbucket's made by Atlassian, who you may have heard of, um, big Australian software company. Uh, Git, I think, is American. Either way, we can trust them both. Hopefully we can trust them both. Um, and they will, especially for students, um, give you free online repositories. I don't, can't remember how much it is, but I think students get like four, I'm gonna say four, two, four or eight gigabytes. I can't remember how much of stuff, which is like more than you'll need for so many software projects that you might be doing at university and stuff like that. And they give you these repositories where you can store your code. Um, there are also things like GitHub Desktop and SourceTree if you want a um, 
a, a kind of a, a graphical interface onto this because using Git itself just by typing stuff in the command line is quite possible, um, but sometimes people like the graphical interfaces as well. So it's good to check these things out and see if you can just sort of start using them. You don't have to master them yet. It takes a long time to master these and the master has just come to say hello. Um, but yeah, they're, they're nice and kind of useful to, to use. And Jack's saying that you will get, um, these will be covered extensively in comp 1531. Uh, Ollie, I do not have a public, oh, maybe I do. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't have a public GitHub, but like I, I think my public stuff may have been on Bitbucket, but I can't remember. Um, I don't, I don't really have that much code that I make, make public in that way. Like most of my code is made public just through the subjects that I teach and stuff like that instead. Um, okay, so let's go on break now. It's 5.05. .05. We'll come back at 10 past 5. Oh, Jack said I do have one. You looked it up, but there's just not much in there. Yeah, I have other ways of, of, of broadcasting my code in a sense. Um, so yes, we'll come back at 10 past 5 and we will continue um, our project and we're going to get um, the, the game running in a sense. And so we're going to be able to complete this. All right, see you soon.
All right, we're back. <laughs> Hilarious conversation happening here in chat about um, getting sponsored and having ads and stuff like that. Um, oh, I should do like ads for uh, wireless headphones, um, unnecessarily uh, monetized mobile games, and and VPNs. Right, that's the whole thing. Um, Jennifer. Your message with the link in it didn't go through, which is very weird because usually if if you do that, um, I can at least see it and approve the message, but it looks like it didn't even appear, so it looks like it got automatically filtered. Um, anyway, just to let everyone know, um, yeah, I didn't see a link either. So, um, uh, Jennifer is doing a survey. This is just personal. This is a personal project, um, where, um, where she's looking at just collecting some information about what kind of things people have done in their assignments. And so the link is, um, somewhere on the forum somewhere. Jack's going to grab the link and he will be able to type it in as a moderator. Yeah. Oh, Artsmart saying the zip file for assignment two isn't working. Um, that's interesting because we did we did actually um, ping Tom about that yesterday afternoon, um, but maybe he hasn't had a chance to look at it yet. So we definitely know that the zip file isn't working, but we'll fix it um, when we next get a chance. Okay, so gonna let Jack find the the link to that survey. Check it out if you want. I think it's something that might be helpful, and it might be really interesting to look at after the fact to to look at some statistics on on what people actually did for the assignment and how people feel like they're, they're tracking and stuff like that. I mean, this could be really handy for me as well because when I get surveys back at the end of term, which is like the My Experience survey, which will be coming up in a few weeks, um, I get a vague idea of people's, um, people's kind of, um, opinions on the subject, I guess you'd call it, uh, but I don't necessarily get, like, raw numbers on it, I'm just saying, okay, people worked this long on this, and they, they thought it was balanced against these other subjects in these ways and stuff, it'd be really interesting to get that information, um, very hard to do, I mean, even with, uh, um, what's my call it, uh, uh, even with the My Experience survey, like, you don't get 100% of the class filling it out as it is. Um, and, uh, oh, Jack's got the link there. There's the Google form that the Jennifer has made. So, as far as I know, this is all anonymous and stuff like that. So, this is something where you can just put some information in if you want. Um, so, it's not something that's linked to CSE. And um, I'm going to assume that Jennifer is not stealing all of your ZIDs and passwords through that. So, I assume that doesn't even have... ZIDs and passwords, right? It's just, it's just information about the assignment. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's go back into our code. Here, we're going to continue our battle royale. So, in battle royale style games, as we we're talking about before, um, individuals are knocked out of the game one at a time, basically, until there's no one left. So let's think about what we can do so far. We can create a list of players. We can make sure it's in alphabetical order. Um, we could do other orderings as well if we wanted to write other functions. Shouldn't be too hard to do that. And we can remove a single player from the list. Now what we're going to do is remove players one at a time, and when there's only one player left, they will be crowned the winner of this round of the game. So, um... What we're now going to do is write a thing that I would call a game loop. Um, this happens in, in nearly all games where it's like, okay, something happens, the game decides what it's doing, and then it goes back. And then something happen something else happens, the game decides what happens, and it goes back, and it just keeps going. So a lot of games that you might play, any kind of real-time game uh, that you play real-time is like games that feel like the the timing's the same as the real world in a sense like you're reacting as things are happening um that loop is usually happening i'm gonna say ideally 144 times a second but in reality more like 60 times a second uh depending on your uh how much money you have wasted on your computer hardware <laughs> then you'll then you'll you'll see how fast things are actually going 
in a game. So this game, much less so, where it's only having to react anytime someone gets knocked out of the game, and we're going to be typing that in. So it's only going to be looping five times each time we go through the game. But it's a similar kind of concept. So we print out the player list, and now I'm going to say, this is interesting, like, what if we modify the print function to tell us how many players are left in the game? If we modify that, then we can actually use double up with the print function, which is otherwise just a void function that wasn't giving us any information back. Now we can use it as a function that is going to tell us how many people are just printed out. And then we know how many players are left in the game, so we don't have to test or loop through the linked list to count how many people are in the game, the print function will do it for us. And then the user will tell us who was knocked out, we knock someone out, and then when there's only one player left, we stop the game loop and we say, okay, that's it. So we've already written a part of this a second ago with our testing, so we're not going to throw away our testing. We think that this section here, who's been knocked out, remove, um, this is all stuff that we're going to use still. So this will be handy. So whether we put this in our main function here or whether we create a function as part of a battle royale to do this, we can kind of make that decision. I think it might be nicer to have our main function kind of not have code in it, in a sense. So it has simple code like call this function to do this. But instead of this, what we're probably going to do is have a loop um, or maybe not even a loop. We would call a function that's in our battle royale and have it do the looping for us. So this is a game loop that we could use. So actually, no point looking at this yet. I mean, you can see a lot of this is the stuff I just did. It's exactly these few lines are nearly, nearly word for word exactly what I did before. Um, but what we're going to do is first off, modify the print players there's a trick there which I, which I did in that while loop, but I'll show you as we do it. I'm going to modify print players to no longer just um, be a void function that um, just prints out information, but it's also going to have a return on its function that's going to tell us how many people are left in the game. Returns the number of, oops, of players that it printed out. And this should be a reasonably simple modification of looping through a list. So I'm looping through a list here and I had the head and then while that was not null we looped through. So I'm just going to count how many times we looped. Um, I could nearly do this with an I. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a bit nicer about it than that though int num players is equal to zero. Note that this, because I changed it here to an integer function, I'm going to change this also to an integer function. So the number of players is equal to zero. Every time we loop through the list and we print out someone's name, the number of players we know goes up by one. So that's all I have to do. Because I know that this thing's looping, and we know it's going to run the loop exactly the same number of times as there are players in the game. Um, then I know that I can say, in the body of this loop, add one to the number of players each time, and that's going to be the correct number of players. Okay, so we'll give that back. Now what we're going to do in the main game loop, um, I think... I'm wondering whether to put it in the main so that we can kind of, if we were looking at this running, we'd see it here. I think, I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to put it in the battle royale. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to stick to the philosophy that each function has a specific purpose. So the whole big main game loop is not necessarily going to go in there. But what I'm going to do is going to put this code in here which is the knockout one person based on their name. So I'm going to make a new function here. I'm actually going off script here. This is not what I was planning on doing in the slides. Uh, but I think, just like, you know, as you're writing the code, you go, I think this is, this is something that could be useful. So this is going to, what information will this function need? It's going to take input from the user but then it's going to 
take the head of the list and remove something from that list and then return a new head of the list. So it takes the head of the list and returns a new head of the list. So those are the, its inputs and outputs. So it's going to return the head of the list. Um, I'm going to call this one remove by name. But all it's going to do is take the head of the list and then it's going to call this remove player function. It's going to return the head of the list. Very, very similar to this. It may have changed. Okay, so let's take this function and implement it here in my C file. Um, ask the user for a player player's name to remove. Remove that node and return the head of the list may have changed. Um, because if we remove the head of the list, the head obviously changes. So the code that's going in here is this code. Now, I'm going to cut this from here and paste it in here. Bear in mind the risks inherent in doing this. If I walk away now, <laughs> and this is just like this, it's not going to be the right code. Because this was the code in the context of, of what we knew in the main, and now it's an individual function on its own. So it is going to take a head as input. That's actually not that bad. This actually is still going to work, right? So we're going to do our printf. Do we have standard input output here? We have standard input output and we have strings. So I think we have everything we need. Um, the nice thing about this is it removes some of the stuff that we need here. So we don't need a string and we don't need standard input output because our main is not running code in a sense. It's calling functions in the battle royale.c and the battle royale.c is the thing that says, oh, I need all the library functions. Whereas the main really shouldn't be using that many of the library functions. I think it's only using one of them so they can have null. And if I want to, I could put all of this in a function as well and say, populate the list somewhere else. And then my main would be, as we've seen before, I did this once before, the main is just really svelte. It's just like, call this function, then call this function, and you're done. Um, I've seen programs where it's really funny where there's a main function and then a single function call that goes off somewhere else and does, does the entire program. It's really funny. It's like, okay, maybe we thinned it down too much because <laughs> we've just made our main function completely obsolete. Um, but yeah. We, we, we want to keep our main function to be like, all right, all of our stuff is in other functions. And we're just like, every line in the main function is most likely going to be just call another function to do something. So anyway, battleroyal.c in here is going to take this code that we had to remove by name. So it's going to ask for the name. It's going to process input. It's going to fgets to put that in there. It's going to strip the new line off it if there is a new line and replace it with a null terminator to end the string and then it's going to say you gave us the head of a list we are now going to call the remove player function which we have access to because it's here in the c file it's also in the h file so we know that it exists we're going to remove that particular player um, after we've processed the input and then the head will be whatever was the result of that. And then we can return the head. So actually, it wasn't that dangerous for me to just copy paste that code. Still wanted to look through it to make sure it worked. So I can copy paste that code. And now I have a lot of the pieces necessary to make this work. So I'm going to print players. But what I'm actually going to do now is maybe not necessarily do that. I'm going to make my game loop here. So I know that this program is going to keep looping until there's only one player remaining. So 
if you say the word until, then you already know what your condition in your while loop is. I said, I want to keep doing this until this. So you go, well, that's my stopping case. That's my stopping condition in the while loop. So my stopping condition in the while loop is if print players, because print players has now changed what it does, it returns the number of players that are printed out. So if there's only one left, we're not going to loop anymore. So, oops, we're going to keep playing while there's more than one player remaining. And while there's more, more than one player remaining, we're going to ask, should someone be knocked out? Who's going to get knocked out? So we're going to say, remove by name. The cool thing about this, sorry, I just wrote print players. I didn't actually make a proper function call here. Yeah. Let's look at the function. Print players takes the head of the list. <laughs> That was going to be pretty funny, you know, just like, I'm just like, uh, high concept programming, and it's like, oh, we're going to do this, and this idea flows into this idea, and this function goes into this function, it's like, Mark, you haven't written the legal C code, <laughs> you're just, you're just waving your hands around and like saying, this magic works. So yes, have to call the function correctly. The cool thing about the check here is the check always runs, and then based on the output of print players, um, the while loop may run or not. So this will print out everyone that's currently in the game, and then um, um, then if there is more than one person in the game, it will then call the remove by name function to see if we're going to remove anyone from the game. So let me make sure I'm calling these correctly. Remove by name only takes the head of the list, but it returns the head of the list. So we have to make sure if we happen to be removing the first person in the list that the head gets set to whatever re remove my name gives us back. Because if we read this, it says it returns the head of the list, it may have changed. So I do want to get the head of the list back. Hello? <laughs> She's sort of helping. Are you helping? She's helping. Okay, so we are removing by name whoever has um, uh, just been knocked out. And after that, I might, just to make this a bit neater here, I'm gonna print out some dotted lines. And the dotted lines are just there to, um, to separate the turns of the game. So we say, who's there? We ask who gets knocked out, and we finish each turn with a separator like this okay i think oh we also need to say something when the when the game finishes so when the game finishes we're going to print out um uh, someone is the winner of the game so we can do a string is the winner and that is going to be the head of the list because there's only one person left they're going to be the head of the list that's going to be their name I think that's everything that we're going to need so I think that our functions have given us enough so that what we're doing is we're removing people from the list one at a time and then when there's only one person left then we'll print out that they are the winner and then that will be the end of the game. Let's see if this works. Compile this, I have made a an error here. Incomplete definition of type struct player. Oh, wait. Haha, <laughs> I made a classic mistake here. I tried to access something inside of a struct that I do not have access to. So if I wanted to print out the, the, the winner's name, I would actually have to um, use a function that can actually see the player's names. So I don't actually do, I don't actually have that. So I might just not, not bother saying that because I know that there's only one person left and they'll be printed out there. So I know that their name will be printed out. So I could actually even just do this is the winner because their name's going to get printed out and they'll print out below it yeah so caffeine said he's behind you um 
I don't have standard input output. I mean, I have a feeling that a lot of this stuff maybe should be in its own functions, but I think we will use that now here. And this should be enough. All right, let's try running this and see what happens. Well, see if I can get it to compile first. So that's actually a classic mistake of someone crossing over between this side of the program, which is the inner workings, and this side of the program, which is just using them. And I tried to um, I tried to use something from the inner workings that I shouldn't be able to do. Basically, like it was like me sitting at the at the wheel of my car and trying to put more petrol into the engine. And it's like you don't get to put more petrol into the engine. You get to press the accelerator more, and then it's somewhere else it decides how much petrol goes in. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's try to run this. Someone said that there might be a problem still, but let's try. Okay, so we have the list of players and we are asking who's going to get knocked out. So now I'm going to ask you <laughs> in chat now to type in names from this list and then depending on the names that you type in, I will knock those people out in that order. And if Chicken doesn't win, there'll be a problem. She's right here. And she'll be very sad. And you won't get to look at her. Oh, of course I go first. Right, fine. So I got knocked out first. And that ends that turn. And then we have the list of who's left. So we know our code's working. Yes, oh my god, someone knocked a chicken out. Oh. Oh, there's going to be hell to pay. So, there are other people to knock out other than me, you know. Okay, someone typed in Aang. <laughs> okay, it's been go between Goku, Katara, and Vegeta for who's going to win next. Someone's angry that Chicken got knocked out. Okay, Katara got knocked out next. So obviously the Dragon Ball fans uh, want this to to end just as um, uh, a Goku and Vegeta. Oh, Goku got knocked. Oh wow, that's interesting. There, Vegeta is the winner. So, okay, you can stop typing them in now. <laughs> I just picked who got in first. Um, so now this is good, right? We've got a program that is able to maintain a list of people. It's able to remove uh, people from it one at a time until only one is remaining. So great, we're done. Program works, all finished, all good. Yay, uh, we're, we're, we're finished, are we? But it's like, Mark, Mark, there's nearly half an hour left in the lecture. Why? <laughs> but the program's finished. Is, is there nothing left to do? And it's like, yes, there are still things left to do. Let me, let me show you what's left. Um, I will go to my compilation command. And I will leak check it. Now we're going to have to run this again. We're going to have to run this again. <laughs> so, um, so you you now get to type in names again and, and knock people out. Okay, so I'm gonna watch chat and see what names you type in, and I will knock those people out of the game in the order that they're typed in. Okay, it's me first again. How did I know that? Hey, Tawaka just said me three times. So rude. So rude. Okay, fine. So apparently I'm bad at games. Uh, Vegeta, our previous champion, got knocked out early this time. And we're going to see if there's anyone other than... Oh, someone knocked out Chicken again. Oh, so sad. And then Goku was after that. So now... <laughs> James, what have you done? James knocked Chicken out last time as well. Oh, Vegeta... Uh, Aang. Okay. So Katara is the one that wins. Oh, error. Free not called for memory allocated with malloc in function create player in battle royale.c at line 26. Okay, we have some information. We know that. I, <laughs> I'm so sad. She's still here. She's still here and she doesn't know that you're being mean to her. Oh, they're being mean to you. They're mean to you. They knocked you out early. Actually, just one person knocked her out early. I saw that. I saw it was the same person. <laughs> Anyway, so line 26, battleroyale.c. We've written a lot of code in the last three lectures. Okay, player, a memory allocation for a player. Uh, we could have guessed 
that this was going to be the memory issue because we're not allocating memory anywhere else in this program. The only place we're allocating memory is in this create player. So when we get into this situation, we have to think, all right, I'm just looking, scanning through for malloc and there's no malloc anywhere else. So we need to think about, you know, we've created a lot of players um, and we put them in a linked list and then we need to, um, we need to make sure we're cleaning up our memory after us. Now, for the moment, this is actually really easy because we know there's only one player left. Um, we know there's only one player left, so if we wanted to, all we would have to do is um, free the head, and this would get rid of our memory issues. However, we are not going to do just this because I, I would be remiss if I did not teach you properly how to free up all the memory in a linked list. I think it's important if we free up all the memory in the linked list. So we're going to think about cleaning up. So we've done this already. We ran leak check to see if we're leaking memory. And yes, we found we found this. We're allocating, allocating memory that we're not freeing. So what we want to do is learn how to free an entire linked list. I don't want to just teach you how to free the one last thing remaining. I want to free the entire list in case, let's say the game ends early or something and there's like 10 people still left in the game we still want to be able to clean up if there are a lot of things left in the list so what we're going to do is show you uh, a um, a way of looping through a list and cleaning up all the nodes as you loop through the list so here we go um, a couple of images to show you what we're doing we're going to start looping as we usually do from the head of the list. So our loop pointer here, probably going to call it current as we do. And we move the loop pointer on to the second node in the list. When we do that, we're also going to keep a pointer to the previous. So it's going to be very similar to the previous pointer, but not exactly. It's a little different. So we're going to save a pointer here to the node that we're freeing. And then the loop pointer moves on to the second node before we do anything to the first node. If we start blowing up the first node and freeing it and stuff like that before we've copied its next, we won't be able to reach the next node. So one of the worst things that we can do in this situation is to free the first node without keeping track of the second, third, fourth node, because if we lose this next pointer, we lose all of these nodes. We don't know how many there are, we'll lose them all and they all become memory leaks. So we could we could we could do it we can make a huge chunk of memory that we've completely forgotten about because the only way to access all the rest of the list is this next pointer coming off the first node. So all of our lists are, you know, in a sense, they're inherently fragile. So because if we change any one of these pointers, we're going to lose the address of memory of the next node, which is the only way we could get to all the other nodes. So what we do is we move this one on so we say okay we definitely have a way to access the second node and if we can access the second node it means we can get rid of the first node safely so what we do then is we call the free function on the first node knowing that we still have a pointer to the second node and then we're going to go on and we're going to do that through the whole list so we're going to move the loop pointer along to another node and then we're going to keep track of the node we were just at and then we're going to free that and so on and so forth and it keeps going like that so, this is the code that we're going to use to free the list. Let's write it um, using those ideas. So I'm going to say um, free all the elements, not elements, all the players, because these are players, in the given list. So I was about to, on instinct, say this is going to return something, but it can't return anything. There should be nothing left once this is done. So this is going to be a void function because after I've finished uh, removing everything from the um, from the linked list, there's nothing to give back. So I'm going to call this one free list, and it's going to take in the head of the list as its input. Control C, copying this and going into my C file to implement it. And here's where my actual function will be. Free all elements of the list starting at head. So, standard setup. I'm going to set myself up for being able to loop through the list. So...
play a current is equal to head. I'm just gonna some white space here so I don't have to keep scrolling. While the current is not null, so we're just gonna do a standard loop here, current equals current next. So if I if I ever wanted to do something which was like I've been given the head of a list and I want to loop through the whole list, it would look something like this. You don't always need to make a new variable here. I could just use the head pointer and loop through the list using the head pointer, especially in this case where the head pointer is never going to be relevant again, because I know the head is pointing at something that's going to get removed. I could just leave this out and say, while head is not equal to null, keep loop through head if I wanted to. There are other cases where I don't want to do that when I'm looping, where the head is actually significant and we need to keep it like this one. Like if I'd used the head as the pointer that I was looping through the list, I would have lost the pointer to the start of the list and it wouldn't have been able to make changes to it or return it and stuff like that. So, but this one's okay because I know that I'm just about to obliterate the whole list anyway, but I'm keeping to my consistency um, because a lot of the time people are going to, um, to read things the same way. So even though this line here is kind of unnecessary, I'm still writing it because people are gonna get used to this current pointer as being the thing that goes through the list. So, things that I said I was going to do. Before I move current onto the next, I was going to save a pointer to the node that I was that I was removing. So I might call that rem node. It's actually really similar because I called it rem node up here, didn't I? Oh, I called it rem name, I think. I didn't have a rem node because I was removing the current that time. So my rem node is equal to current, and then current moves on to the next. Um, after the current has moved on to the next, then I can free the node that rem node is pointed at. So I will start a new one. Here, that's my null and my current starts pointed at this one. So this is my current. I'm assuming there's a head pointer. I'm just gonna call it H. So I don't have to, don't have to like write words really badly with a mouse. Um, <coughs> okay, so the current was the head. Um, pointers that are the same are aiming at the same object. Um, so if they're equal, like they've been made equal like so, and then while current is not equal null, rem node is equal to current. So let's let's make a new one here. I'm gonna call this one rem. That's the remove the remo node's gonna get removed, and then current becomes current next. So the current is no longer pointing here. It's gonna follow this next pointer and say, I am now pointed here. If the current is pointed at this one here, it means it's safe to destroy the previous one because we do have access to the rest of the list. So the next thing we can do is we're going to free the rem um, pointer, which is going to give back this node to memory. So my computer can now use that piece of memory for other things, other nodes or, or other functions that I call and stuff can use that memory. So I'm going to free that. And this is going to keep going. Current's going to move on, and we're going to free the rem. Current's going to move on. We're going to free this. This we're going to free this one. Oh, sorry. I'll get a cursor that you can see more clear. We're going to free this one after the current has moved to this one, and then the current will move on onto null. Rem will free this one, and then the loop will stop. And by then, current will be pointed at null, which means the whole list will have been um, will have been freed. Just make sure that that's the same. That's what I was doing here. Yes, rem node, move that on and then free it. Yep. Okay, so now we have a function. So instead of just sim simplistically just saying, oh, I know there's only one player left, so I'm only gonna remove one. I wanna teach you how to, how to free up an entire list should you ever need to. This loop is going to be able to go through and um, take these kind of three steps that were in our pictures there. First, 
make sure you maintain a pointer to the thing you want to remove then you take your current and you move it along to the next one so that you don't lose the rest of the list and then you can free the one that you'd already decided was the one that was going to get removed okay so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna call that function here free list on the head and now we should end up in a situation where we have come through and we've created a list we've allocated all this memory and then we've removed by name one at a time each one and each one that we removed part way through the program like that we were freeing their memory so that's pretty safe because we know that uh, remove player remove player here it was maintaining the list properly by using this bit of code to skip the thing that we were removing and then it was always freeing the thing that we were removing so we don't have any memory problems there but we always had a memory problem because the list still existed with one element in it at the end so we were going to free the entire list which we know is only going to free that one element but it's still it's still worth knowing that there's code that can remove an entire list um, and now we shouldn't have any memory remaining uh, anywhere in our program uh, because once we hit this point we've taken all of the specific memory that we created and we've either removed them in these functions or this one cleans up everything that's remaining when we hit this closing bracket um, this pointer will also get cleaned up and all the code that ran here will get cleaned up and then we're done we give all the memory back to the computer and we know that we never left anything hanging let's run it to make sure um, now we're running it with leak check again with our free function in there and you know the drill pick who's gonna get knocked out now everyone has to say as many different names as you can before before James says chicken. <laughs> it's a race. It's a race between everyone and and the 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 chicken killer. Okay, so me Goku Ang Vegeta. Oh. Uh, Oh wait, Katara, that's it! There you go! It worked. Chicken was the winner. James must have like looked away for a second and missed it. Either that or like everyone has, has found found James somewhere. Wherever like, you know, wherever everyone is and said, Hey, hey, stop doing that. <laughs> so winner winner, chicken dinner. Um, Chicken actually had her dinner as well. I got an automatic feeder that fed her during the break as well. So, like, she actually ran off and had food and then came back afterwards. The nice thing, though, as you can see here, the error that we had before, free not called for memory that was allocated, is no longer there. So, if we look at it carefully, we can see that... Um, I got knocked out for... Because every round I get knocked out first... Um, so the memory allocated for me was freed by the remove function um, and then it was, uh, I can't remember who else, it was like Aang, Goku. As we went through everyone, all of their memory was freed. So each one of these is a single memory allocation. They were all freed and then we got to the end. Uh, Chicken was the only one remaining and her memory was then freed because it was like, we don't need to store her name anymore. Game's finished um, there. And then we no, no longer have any memory leaks. So, you can see how, when we're working with linked lists, we can get complicated use of memory. Because we have lots of memory things lying around, and that we can track them all via pointers. So it needs to, we need to have um, a way of saying, depending on how we set up our memory, we need some way of then freeing the memory. So, it's reasonably easy here, because it's just a single linked list of players. And so freeing it involves just where are we here just looping through all of the players so you saw the structure that I put together for that um, then going through and just having some code that says I can free each one of these things without necessarily losing the pointer to the next one because I've already grabbed the next pointer here to store in my current so I can free that r removal removing node there actually I don't know if I should call that removing node it's not really removing it it's actually freeing it entirely. 
So I'll call that free node. It's not going to change the way this works. It's just going to make it a little easier to understand. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> people, are, people are putting ads in the chat for things that aren't paying us any money. <laughs> okay. So that is... Um, our entire program, which is a demonstration of not just using linked lists, but also um, using multi-file projects where we're talking about how to use structs. Um, we've done a type define in here as well. Um, what else have we done? Um, pointers, memory allocation, freeing of memory, uh, looping through lists, new type of loop nearly that is about that, that doesn't really care about what it does, but cares about when it stops, you know? And so a whole lot of interesting code in here. And this is going to, this wraps up the, um, the, the, the big story arc for linked lists. So now we have a complete program that does lots of different things with linked lists. And I think for a lot of people, this will be like all the learning that we've done in the last three lectures will be the key to, to solving a lot of the problems in the, um, uh, in the second assignment. Um, because a lot of the code in here is going to be quite similar to what you're going to be doing. It's not exactly the same. Um, the questions, we like, we kind of make sure that what I do here is not exactly the same questions, but it is the same concepts, you know? And hopefully you get some practice from all the stuff I've been doing. It's like drawing these things actually makes a big difference uh, in terms of your understanding of how you're going to use them. Let's see if I had any slides. I think... Oh, there was, there was another thing, um, challenges. If people are still up for challenges, um, the, uh, the, the, the main challenge I'd give you is like, ooh, take this and make it work for a music synthesizer <laughs> instead of a battle royale. But another thing you can, if you can do if you want to is, um, can we just remove random people from the list? So could I just like press go, 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 and all it would do each time was randomly select someone, um, from from the game and then we'd, we'd get a random winner afterwards another challenge that was brought up during the lecture which was could we um put different uh stats in for people and then order people based on their power level or something like that um or even um not just ordering the list based on their power level could we print people out in the order of their power level so could we print people out in a different order from how they're actually printed out in the list? Um, that one's actually very hard, by the way. So that's a really interesting question. That's getting to like you kind of exam question territory, like hard exam question territory. It's like um, I have a list that's not in order, uh, printed out in alphabetical order. I think that would be quite interesting. Yeah, not easy to do. Fiddly. Yeah, but anyway. So there's. There's some stuff like that um, that we could do if you wanted a challenge. Otherwise, um, that is linked lists. So that is um, my kind of complete teaching on, on the basics of how to work with linked lists. And hopefully now you have the ability to create lists. You have the ability to insert anywhere in the list, start, middle, and end. Um, you have the ability to remove anywhere from the list, start, middle, and end. And you also know how to, to allocate and free the memory that's going to be used for them. Um, <laughs> Ricardo is like sorting algorithms go brr. Yeah, so we're actually, we're, we're not teaching sorting algorithms in Comp 1511. There's enough to learn without getting into that deep level of learning about because because what we're doing in 1511 is like teaching you how to do stuff um when you get to stuff like sorting algorithms and things you start learning how to analyze what you're doing so that you can make some things go faster than other things and stuff like that but you know we, we got enough on our plate as it is i've already thrown a gigantic assignment at you um in order for us to learn about sorting and and efficiency of code and stuff like that i'd want another two or three weeks so that's going to be in later subjects instead um we've, we're doing enough <laughs> you're doing enough <laughs> there's enough work in this course already <laughs> okay so we're going to wrap it up there so we are like five minutes early but it's okay um uh, good luck in assignment two, really, because this this now is the code that you want to base your assignment two on. So, 
it's all still available. Um, you'll be able to download it, and obviously it's it's going to be available through the the whole um, the whole time you spend on assignment two. So I will wrap it up there, um, and um, I'll come back in a second and answer any questions that anyone has about the code that we wrote today. All right, have your five minute early mark. <laughs> See you soon. Alrighty, I'm back. Um, were there any questions people wanted to ask about the code I wrote today? I did write a lot of code today, although not as much as Wednesday. I think we wrote more code on Wednesday. Um, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in chat now and I will answer them, go through code and show you bits and pieces and things like that. Oh, Jennifer was asking us to post the oh, post the link. Jack, do you still have the link? Um, because I was about to scroll up and look for it, and I realized that I had to scroll up through the multiple runs through the game with all the names there. Uh, Cy Schrodinger was asking, remember to save the demo. Um, which demo? You mean this code? I think I have saved all of the files, so hopefully that'll be fine. Oh, uh, Jack's got the, the, the Google form there. Yeah. There we go. So if people are interested, fill it out. I think it'll be, um, it'll be interesting to see what the results are. Um... Oh, Zian's asking, do we have revision questions for the exam? Uh, yes, you do. In week 10, in your, um, in your labs and the revision tests for week 10, we'll be really, really specific about the revision questions there, where we actually say, this is the difficulty of this particular question that's going to be in the exam. This is the difficulty of this particular question. Things like this are going to come up. Um, we also have in a lot of the um, the weekly revision tests, um, a lot of those questions are exam-like questions. So where and the other thing also is we have a bank, a big bank of revision questions, which is just like just a whole bunch of lab exercises that are sorted by by topic that you can go through and um, and try. So we'll release them in week ten also. Um, I think now's not the best time for it because I think um, the assignment is what you should be focusing on now and then um, the study will probably come after that or maybe even during because we are going to still be talking about that a lot in week 10. So we're definitely, I have a, I have a whole, well it's not a whole lecture but it's at least half a lecture which goes through the exam and, and says 
these are the questions that are going to be in the exam. Well, not, not the exact questions, but this is exactly what question one is going to look like. This is what question two is going to look like. It would show you what it is without necessarily telling you the exact question, but we'll say that like, you know, this one will definitely be about working with arrays in such a way. This one's about working with linked lists in such a way, you know, that kind of information. So you can, you can sort of plan out, um, your, your path through the exam without having to sort of turn up to the exam, open the paper and, and react to what you see, you'll have an idea about what's going on beforehand. Um, so Mal was saying the question for printing in an order from an unsorted list, uh, list as in a linked list, not an array. Yeah. Yeah, usually when I use the word list, I mean linked list. And when I use the word, I know I'll try to say array when I'm saying that. When I'm, when I'm trying to talk about, um, both of them at, at the same time, I'll often say collections of information or, or data structures even. So the, the term data structure is just a way of organizing information. And you can see that an array is a way of organizing information. A linked list is also, I mean, one could argue that a struct is also a way of organizing information and that could be considered a data structure as well. I mean, it literally has structure in its name. So you can see where the name comes from. Yeah. Um, Zach was asking, is the exam written or code questions? Uh, the exam's all digital um, and there will be code questions as well as sort of, I guess you could call them theory questions. Some of the theory questions are multiple choice. Some of them are type in uh, what you think is going to happen in this, uh, in this program, like type in the output of this program or whatever, that kind of thing. Um, so there's there's things that are going to remind you a lot of lab exercises because they're just written in exactly the same format because why test you on something we haven't taught you right so it's going to be the same way that we've been doing stuff in the course um but there's other questions which is like do you do you actually understand what's going on with these concepts and stuff like that um so yeah there's a mix um, but having said that there's nothing there's nothing written down we are not marking your handwriting <laughs> we're marking your text so I, I assume this is something outside of most people's experience, but trying to mark 900 things um, is is pretty bad. And when we have to do human marking, it has to be consistent. So one person marks all of your like question one or all of your question two or something like that. So um, if we had to read it all handwritten, um, I think it would it would just take too long for starters, and it's a it's a pretty hellish job. So what we do is have it all typed in so that we can do at least partial marking on things on a computer. Um, in the same way we're going to do being, or be doing auto marking the same way we've been auto marking your labs. Um, you have auto tests, the auto tests will help you to, um, uh, to gauge how well your program's working. Please don't try to use the auto test to gauge how many marks you're going to get. Auto tests are there to show you which things are going wrong not um, give you a percentage chance of how many marks you're going to get. Like we, don't, we don't mark like that, right? Um, so use the auto test as a tool, not as a predictor. I will, I will say that again. I know I'll have to say that again when I talk about the exam. It's always something that comes up. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So you'll have auto tests when we have code problems and um, you'll have some other questions as well. So I'll go through all of that in, in formal detail with slides and everything in week 10. Okay, so um, Sarah's asking, why do we need the if statement, um, the input string length that equals is the new line and that. So that was a particular line of code here. The fact that you're asking a question about this makes me think I should probably explain it. Um, this is like we're doing a code review right now. Like you're saying, why do we need this? And it's like, oh, okay, oh, good. I need to justify this. Um, I'll spell it correctly. F gets will um, store the new line that we type in in the input string. So every time we use F gets, um, F gets is going to take everything that we type in through the terminal. So one line of text will go in F gets. And the only way it knows the line has finished is that someone presses enter 
And so we repress enter and go down to the next line. And then our previous line all goes into this fgets string, which is being stored here. Which means the actual enter key, so every key press that we do goes into fget. It goes in, goes through fgets into this input, which means the enter key goes through as well. Now, in our list here, there's no enter key, there's no new line, like so, at the end of any of these names. There's no new line there, there's just the word. So, if we type in something like mark there, um, fget is going to make it look like this. And then these two won't match, and you won't be able to remove mark from the, from the list of players. So, what that little bit of code does there is it says string length minus one. So the length of input minus one is the final letter in the input. If the final letter in the input is a new line, like so, if it's a new line here, that's the final letter, get rid of it. So both of these is actually like, has the null terminator, but we don't think about it as really existing. If we replace this thing with the null terminator, then this one doesn't matter anymore because this one's going to end the string here. It ends up becoming the same string as in here. So we'll get rid of this entirely because that's not legal code. What this is doing is it's saying, look for that new line that fgets is going to pick up at the end of the line of typed code. Um, to replace it with a null terminator, which is going to say, um, end the word there. We don't want that new line on the word that was typed in. So this um, this just finds that and removes it. There we go little bit of explanation there because I think I probably just kind of went over that without explaining it fully. Um, as you were saying there, so every time you ask f gets we need that. Um, depending, it, you're, you're nearly always going to get a new line on the end of your f gets input. So anytime you're going to use an f gets input, expect that the new line's probably going to be there. So either you you want it to be there and you're going to use it for something else, or if you know that you definitely don't want it there, then you can put this piece of code in after your f gets, and that will remove the new line from the end of it, so that you have just the letters and not the not the enter key as well that was pressed. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll see if you if if you're if you're getting it there. Um, ah, interesting question from Darren there. Um, Sarah, I'm going to move on here, but let me know if this is helping you or not. If it isn't, I'll come back and talk to you more about it. Okay, so Darren was saying, how come I couldn't? As I tried to do, it was a pretty funny thing that I tried to do there. I just tried to do printf, uh, let's just say string head name. So let's think about, there's a difference between what we know about the entire program and what parts of the program know about each other. So, the main knows all of the code that it has written, and it also knows all of the code that is has been included one way or another. So, the, the only thing that we know about the players is whatever we can see in battleroyale.h. So let's look at battleroyale.h. We know that the capital P player, which is what the head is, is a pointer to a struct player. And then we go through all of this and there's a lot of capital P players being used. There's nothing about the struct though. So I finish here and it's like, that's all that I can see. So my main does not know that there is something inside the head. So I cannot read the name from inside, um, inside the head, which is a struct here 
in the C file, but the C files can't see each other. <laughs> Ironic. The C files can't see each other. They can only see the H file and say we only communicate through this. The reason for that is, for example, if this is two different people working on this, I'm working on the main and someone else is working on the C, they would know the ways in which these things need to be changed for things to be safe. Um, and ne not, I don't necessarily know that in the main. I know I can do stuff in the H. So if I did something like, um, instead of calling the function to remove name by head, uh, remove by name, I just went, uh, why don't you just like free um, just 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 get rid of the second person in the list because I know that we type them in in this order so the second person in the list is the one who I want to knock out next um, you can imagine the devastation that can be caused if that piece of code was able to be run so if I could just like not even remove by skipping over things properly or anything like that I've just gone not just destroy it just to destroy the second um, person in the list. Um, the list is then no longer a functioning linked list because the next pointers are pointing at, at, at memory that's been freed and stuff, and we can't access anything after the thing that we just freed. And this is why we don't have access to the struct, because if we did have access to the struct here, we could do catastrophic damage without understanding what we're doing. Instead of that, what we get is the H file says, no, no, if you want to remove something, you've got to remove it based on the things we've given you. So we've given you access to remove things. We're totally okay if you want to remove things, um, but you can only remove things by identifying them correctly. We'll go through, we'll do the proper skipping and we'll remove them. I'm actually going to talk about this um, next week. We're going to go into this in more detail because this is the thing that we, we call an abstract data type where the player is a, a type in the same way that an integer or a double is a type, but we call it an abstract data type because it stores some information, but when we're using it, we don't actually know what it is. So we don't know what it is. We can't get through into this struct, um, but if we do want to make changes to it, we have to use the rules. So we say, okay, we're, we're making a polite request to remove a player. And then the C file says, yeah, okay, I acknowledge your polite request to remove the player. I know the details that are inside and how this works, and I'm going to make sure that this is removed correctly. You can't just call free on something. We need to make sure that when you remove something from a list, the whole list is still a valid list. Um, and if the head changes because you wanted to remove the first element of the list, I'm going to give you a new pointer to the first element of the list so you can keep track of it and stuff like that. So what we're doing is protecting ourselves from accidental um, changing of information that we don't really understand, which is what we could do in the main if we could see this struct. But as it is, the reason why we can't do that is the only code that we can see from our main is whatever's in these two. There's a lot of code in those two, but none of it has to do with the um, player because obviously those are just standard libraries, but everything to do with the player is in this battle royale.h here and the battle royale.c, which is also linked to it, but we can't see this. We can only see that we've been told that it's a concept. So we can't get any further into it than that. So we can't go beyond this pointer and start accessing things inside the pointer because the main doesn't know what they are. And that's by design. We actually make it so that it can't see what they are, because if it could, it might be able to make changes to things which would break things. So hopefully that's helping. Um, Sarah, hopefully what I said before was helping you with um, the understanding of the FGET's subtleties, removing the new lines. And Darren, I, th I hope that's, yeah. I Don't worry if you don't 100% get it, because we do actually have another two hour uh, lecture where I go into that particular concept because it's it's actually a really really useful concept in programming to be able to like it's funny it's funny because we, we think uh, programming's freedom to do uh, everything with data and then we go to a great deal of effort to remove our own freedom <laughs> so we go to a great deal of effort to say no don't worry about what's in there and you go but what I want to well <laughs> I want to do stuff with what's in there it's like yes do them through the h file 
if you do them through the age file then we can guarantee everything is safe um, if you had access to the data then you'd be able to do things to it that we wouldn't want you to do uh, this is actually the same argument where um, we were talking about uh, global variables like someone was talking about global variables sometime earlier in the term and it was like this is the argument of why we don't use them um, because you can make changes to them from anywhere and it might cause problems whereas if we do it like this we say that no one outside of um, the C file here can ever do anything to these structs which means that they can't break them because they don't really have access to them they can't really do anything to them because the only way they can do things to them is through these functions and so if we control the interface to that data which is the the H file what we do is we make it so that um, every time someone wants to remove a player we check very carefully that they're doing the right thing and we say there is only one process for removing players and it's the correct way so we need to check for if it's the first player we need to check whether um, it's even in the list or not um, and then we say okay we need to skip it in a specific way we need to free it when it's done you know so we're very careful about what we're doing um, and that way we can say yes anytime you want you can call the remove player function and we'll handle all the safety stuff for you to make sure it works correctly yeah so hopefully that helps um, haven't seen any other questions from other people so I assume that um, everyone's either up to speed or your brains all exploded and you say I'm gonna need to rewatch all of these lectures and figure it out um, Oh wait, Sarah had another question. Can I explain what will happen if it is new line? It will terminate the program. So let's go back to the code that you were looking at um, here. So there's definitely no terminating of the program here. Like we're not, we don't have anything here that can end the program in any way. All we're saying is that if the um, uh, if the last, so this thing here, string length of the input is the number of characters in the input, minus one gives us the index of the final character, right? So this is just arrays. The size minus one is always the final element in the, in, the, um, in the array. The input is an array of characters. If that is a new line, we will replace it. So the difference between testing and assigning of the same letter. So if that letter was a new line, instead of it being a new line, we're going to replace it with the null terminator, which is going to make sure that the string is basically one letter shorter and the new line isn't part of the string anymore. So it's going to take, I wonder if I should draw a picture. Let's draw a picture. So f gets has got oops that's a slash zero <laughs> very bad typing but you can see so we have this and let's put some indexes in here zero one two three four five um, this could be anything. We don't really care what's happening here because there's a null terminator there. Null terminator is a bit messy, but you know what I'm trying to type in. <laughs> what I'm trying to write is one of these. So, string length. Let's let's have a look at what string length is going to do. String length is going to measure how many characters there are in this. So there's one, two, three, four. The null terminator says stop counting here. So string length equals four. String length minus one is equal to three. So string length minus one lets us look at the following character. So this is why this is string length of input minus one. So string length of input minus one is gonna have us looking at this character. 
if we look at that character, so if we look at that character and that happens to be a new line, that's us saying, okay, the enter key was pressed at the end of that input, and so there's a new line there. We're going to replace that new line by saying, if, it, if we did find the new line, now input string length minus one, which is the same thing here, is now going to be equal to the null terminator. So what I'm going to say is I'm overwriting the whatever character is there, that new line with a null terminator. So what that's, that does is it erases whatever's in there and says, all right, I'm replacing you with a null terminator. What happens now to this string is if I use this string afterwards, I get the letters A, B, and C, and I see the null terminator and I stop. So this code, all it does is it says, if you find a new line at the end of the F gets, remove it from the string by replacing it with the null terminator. So that way, this isn't important anymore because the null terminator is here. We only read the characters before the null terminator. Um, so this was my way of saying, if I've typed in a name and pressed enter, I'm going to remove the enter key from it and end up with only the, the kind of letters that were typed in that I want to use. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's how that piece of code works. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more information about how that runs. A little step-by-step -step sometimes of exactly what's going on there um, with some pictures can often help. Um, are you asking why we want to replace it? Um, we'd want to replace it because um, the enter key is not necessarily part of the information that our person was giving us. So when I type in here, um, let's run it again. So when I type in mark and press enter there, what I'm intending is to match this string here. Um, and we can see from how we were building it that that string does not have a new line on it. So if I type in the, um, the code with a new line and I don't run this code, which is going to take the new line off what I type in, then um, no one will ever get knocked out of this. I'll show you actually. So I'll just end that program there and let's remove that code that's cleaning the new line from the end. Uh, I'm going to compile this again. Oops. I still had this, which is not legal code. Okay. So I compile that and run it. So let's say I want to knock mark out. I type in mark and press enter. I'm still in the list. The reason I'm still in the list now is I tried to remove mark new line from the list of players, but mark new line isn't even in the list of players. Only mark without a new line is in the list of players. And so that's why a lot of the time when we're working with um, F gets, we will want to make sure to remove the new line from the end. Um, because when we type it in, in F gets, we're going to pick up the new line um, as one of the letters that was typed in. Um, but usually when we're storing data like this, the list of names and stuff, or a list of strings, we won't have new lines on the end of them. So we want to be able to have the input that was typed in and the intention of the input that was typed in match the actual data that's in this list. So that's that's why we would be doing that. That's why we need this code because the enter key from the human perspective is just please send this input um, rather than um, the enter key really being needing to be part of that word. Hopefully that's a bit of information um, that, that, that helps you understand um, why we would have to replace it because it's, um, uh, it's a character that we don't necessarily want to be part of the string. Yeah, um, well, new line is a character, but then if we're using strings here to store a name, we wouldn't store a new line on the end of that um, because it, it just makes no sense. There's no need to have a new line uh, on the end of someone's name. Like you have new lines when you're printing stuff out and things in order to move things between lines, but someone's name doesn't have an enter key on the end of it. Like my name 
doesn't have a new line on the end of it. Your name also doesn't have a new line on the end of it. So it doesn't make sense to store a name with a new line on the end of it. So if we type something in and it, and it picks up something that has a new line on the end of it, which what fgets tends to do, because every time fgets won't get any information unless you press the new line key, but it's one of the weird things about fgets that it picks up every single key that you type in basically. So what we want to do is we want to detect that and if we find it we remove it here. So this is a line of code that we will use often, uh, sorry a little section of code that we would use often to clean up uh, the fgets input after we've gotten it. So hopefully that's some information that helps you out with that. Um, I think there will be potentially in assignment 2 or at least in labs and stuff there will be some opportunities to use um, F gets and just see the difference of what happens when you strip the new line or not. Oh, glad you got it. That's awesome. Um, I think because I haven't seen any other questions while while we've been talking with uh, with Sarah and Darren there, like learning a lot about these little bits and pieces. Hopefully, um, I will move on from there and I'll wrap up the lecture. Um, hope everyone has a chance to start the assignment soon. I think. You know, I'm always going to say it. The sooner you start it, the easier it's going to be overall to do. Um, I think that the extension stuff might be releasing sometime soon, or has already. I haven't actually spoken to Tom. Well, I've been speaking to you, so I haven't spoken to Tom this afternoon. So I'm not sure uh, if he's released it yet or not. Uh, but the extension stuff for the assignment should be out soon. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you all, and I'll see you next Wednesday.